Hi, I'm Michelle Vaccarello, Senior Digital Editor of Pharmaceutical Manufacturing and PharmaQBD.com, and today we're here in Waterford, Ireland at AirGen with Mr. Patsy Carney, who is Managing Director here. Thank you so much for taking time to talk with us, Patsy. No problem. Um, first of all, could you tell me what you do here at, at AirGen? Well, AirGen Pharma was uh, formed specifically to develop and uh, commercially supply what we call high-potency pharmaceutical products. So products really that need a high level of containment um, in the development of the uh, finished dosage form, which in our case is tablets and capsules. Uh, and we have a facility here that was specifically designed and built to handle uh, such compounds um, in a controlled environment. Great. So what's unique about your technology for isolation and how you're keeping your products and workers safe here? We, um, we effectively uh, have a dedicated facility that we designed specifically to handle these kind of products from uh, the hair handling systems, the actual process flows, the, uh, the marriage basically of the equipment that we use to process the product and how we protect the operator in terms of uh, during each of those process operations. We've had to deal with some of the challenges around the fact that we need flexibility because we are uh, designing, we are developing products for a range of customers across a range of markets um, that uh, we need quite a bit of flexibility around the process. So we tend to have um, the protection, in our case, provided by the air suits that we use for the actual operator, together with the design features in terms of air handling, uh, dust containment, and so on within the area. So it's a, a different approach because uh, many people would, or other organizations would use the approach of isolators as providing the uh, main protection. Uh, for us, that just restricts us in terms of what we need in terms of uh, flexibility around the unit processes. So that's the approach that we've taken, which is uh, uh, unique for what we do. But uh, the actual facility itself then um, is dedicated to these uh, type of products. Um, so from the point of view of how we handle them, how we process them, how we clean in terms of the area we use, for instance, cleaning verification, not cleaning validation. So every time we process a product, there's one product in the area at any one time. And when we process that product and we clean, we verify each time through swabbing techniques with um, um, uh, validated analytical techniques. So to ensure and verify that we've removed the product from the area before we'll allow the next product in. Mm -hmm. So quite a, it's, it's a mixture of the, how we design it, but also around the operational controls that we have in place. Um, and that's just the way Airgen does it, um, mm -hmm. and how we satisfy ourselves from a, from a risk mitigation perspective to ensure that we've built in enough controls in there to um, satisfy from a GMP point of view that we've ensured that we have no uh, danger to the actual patient in terms of carryover from one product to the next, and also then from a health and safety perspective that we have ensured that we've protected the operator uh, in every way possible from actual exposure to the product. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of automation, it's very operator? It has to be. The, the, the nature of what we do being uh, that we have to, de we're developing the products, so from small scale right up to commercial scale and then doing the commercial product, um, we need we therefore need quite a lot of operator intervention mm -hmm. um, before we actually um, effectively uh, come up with the, the validated process for the manufacturer. And then we can look to, to probably introduce a, a greater level of automation. But right now, when we're in that development phase and we're actually in that early commercial phase, we need that intervention so that we can actually intervene with the process and, and actually control the process through quite a lot of operator intervention at this stage. Mm -hmm. And you do a lot of training with your operators and you mentioned that throughout the Yeah, and, and the, I mean, um, all of our employees to date are, are, are graduates. Um, but in, as well as that then in terms of from um, induction training, uh, product awareness training, um, we, we put quite a lot of inf emphasis on that. And also we would have quite a... Um, uh, a detailed um, process developed for how we evaluate the product before it comes into our facility to ensure we've gathered all the information we possibly can, that we've categorized the product in terms of we have four levels in terms of the actual um, the potency of the product from one to four, four being the highest potency product, um, and strategies around how we'd handle uh, any product that falls into those uh, categories. Right now, we deal with certainly top-end Category 3 products. In some cases, they're going into Category 4. And the strategy around how we handle it from the raw material coming in right through to the finished mm -hmm. product, either in the production facility or the laboratory facility. And we also we do that in conjunction with um, 
an occupational health advisor we have outside the organisation and then a healthcare professional who actually would sign off on the medical surveillance um, associated with those products. So, And then what we do is we take we take our people through that for each of the products so that they are keenly aware of what the actual issues are around the handling of any particular product mm -hmm. uh, because we really cannot afford for them to be in any way uh, careless or complacent with how they actually deal with these products because they are for uh, very serious uh, therapeutic areas such as oncology, immunosuppressants. Best example is probably an immunosuppressant. If somebody gets a high level of exposure to um, an immunosuppressant product, they could compromise their own immune system. So we can't afford to have that kind of risk associated with So therefore, yes, we invest quite a bit in terms of training and awareness. Mm -hmm. And what do you think of the new QBD initiative? Are you using any QBD or Lean Six Sigma? Um, that's something that we've applied from day one. My, my partner in the business, Tom Brennan, the technical director, is actually a black belt Six Sigma. So we've, we've tried to use Six Sigma techniques right from the development phase. So uh, design of experiments, so that we would, we would um, do metrics of experiments when we were trying to investigate the sort of, um, uh, for instance, in the formulation design in terms of the, the sort of influence of any particular excipient. We would, we would do it by, by a design of experiments approach. Um, you know, to identify what process parameter we're trying to optimize and then feed the information in in terms of the software program to actually determine the optimum formulation. We generate uh, process capability data even on the smaller scale product batches that we make um, and we build that process capability data as we scale the product up so that we're actually, from that point of view, looking at a Six Sigma process from, from beginning to the end. We also, um, we tend to look um, to apply even lean principles to the actual formulation. So if we can take it through a process which has got um, uh, a small number of process steps as opposed to a convoluted five, six processes, if we can get that, that we can condense that down to three by actually paying careful attention to the excipients we use in the process and so on, that's the approach we'll take. So we develop with a view towards what's this going to look like when we actually commercially scale it up. Um, and that's born on the experience, I guess, of Tom and I. Tom's coming from an R&D background. Mine is the operations and business development side of the business. And really, we've been in that kind of handoff situation for so many years now where um, you've got a product developed and you're looking at, so what is the capability of that product when I take it to an operational um, environment? And yes, I want a Six Sigma process coming through so that I have actually got a robust process and a robust product that will actually uh, come through. And also from from any of the regulatory authorities, whether it's the FDA in the US or EMEA here in Europe, that's what they're looking for now. They look, and rightly so, looking for statistical justification for whatever process parameters you have or product specification that you have. So we tend to look to build that data and gather that data from the early phases of the development. So. Um, and now, when Ayrton Pharma sat on the FDA ISP committee um, to, that's right. to develop the guidance for the risk map. Right? Yeah. That's right. I mean, the, the risk map guidance, which was um, basically uh, using ICHQ9 and around um, around risk management, etc., that effectively um, um, the idea of dedicated facilities for handling certain medicinal products, such as these high potency products. So mm -hmm. Tom actually sits on that committee. Um, which includes industry representatives, um, uh, the FDA, um, and uh, the you know the, the industry representatives are all members of ASP, um, and effectively what it is is trying to trying to uh, provide uh, some draft guidance to FDA around what's what's needed uh, to handle these products and the idea of using a dedicated facility, and I guess we bring. Uh, we bring a certain amount to bear in that in that committee because of the fact that what we have is um, um, uh, we've done it. We've actually designed a facility specifically to handle these products. A lot of other companies are talking about what they will do, or talking about the facility, the existing facility they have, and what they're going to have to change to make it more suitable. Potentially the big pharma companies, whereas we're saying, well, well, actually, we started out to build a facility specifically for this. So it's a dedicated facility. So we're kind of really talking about what we have done, mm -hmm. um, and um, that's that's certainly been of interest to FDA. And we've we've actually we've we've uh, we've separately met with FDA in Rockville to actually talk them through our our, um, our design approach and our operational approach in terms of of uh, handling these products. So, and it's a, it's a great forum because you know you, you learn you learn quite a bit uh, from from others who are uh, operating this area, and we, we've 
we've taken on board some uh, issues particularly around uh, uh, cleaning verification and so on where we've we've put some additional controls in because that came up in the discussion as well so it's a it's a good forum and we feel we've we've quite we've a certain amount to contribute because we're sort of where they're doing it mm -hmm. so uh, it, uh, it that kind of experience is invaluable to others as well and um, it doesn't do us any harm to be sort of engaged with the regulatory authorities right. in advance of when we're going to have them for inspection. So, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Patsy. I really appreciate you. Yeah, welcome. Time to talk Thanks for us. coming to see us. All right.